story has it there was a man by the name of Jimmy Hutmaker. He was a local character who roamed the business district in Excelsior, Minnesota, which is a trendy artist community just outside of Minneapolis. Mr. Jimmy, as he was known, had some disabilities, but for the most part, he was a sharp wit, although he would talk to himself quite a bit, which isn't all that out of place anymore. <laughs> Going from spot to spot, he walked miles every day and was cared for by the local shop owners until he passed in October of 2007. Now, really quickly, let's back up 43 years to 1964. The Rolling Stones were on their first U.S. tour and just so happened to be playing in Excelsior, Minnesota. The Danceland Ballroom Hall seemed uh, less than impressed with the British invasion, with fewer than 300 people showing up as the Stones weren't well received. Some say the steep $6 ticket price kept people away, where most nights it was only about a dollar and a half to hear a band. One local named Gary Rains recalls the night as rather lackluster. There was some booing, he said, and a fair amount of who are these Beatle wannabes. But he went on to say he actually enjoyed the show. According to Excelsior lore, Mick Jagger went into a local pharmacy drugstore the following day. And while waiting to fill a prescription, Mr. Jimmy, of all people, was in front of him, ordering a cherry Coke. Sorry, sir, the clerk said. I'm sold out. Ugh, we've all been there. Settling for a regular Coke, Mr. Jimmy turned to Mick and said, You can't always get what you want. How many times have you heard that on the radio? Years later, it became the tagline to one of the Rolling Stones' biggest hits. Side note, by the way, good luck trying to make sense of the song's lyrics, though. I'm still bewildered, but who am I to question Mick Jagger's track record? But it's the latter part of that infamous line that I've been chewing on. You get what you need. Maybe, just maybe, and I love to feed a good fantasy dream every now and then. Let's for a second stand and mix shoes. Scary, I know, I know, but hang with me. What if standing in line after a not so glamorous night and with Beatlemania in full force in the States, he's probably having a little pity party. Now let's be honest, he may be a bit depressed. Standing the next day in a tiny drugstore somewhere in Minnesota, thinking, oh, I should just be home. Poor Mac. Thinking and thinking and thinking. Why am I here? And then the guy in front of him, who literally walks around aimlessly for miles each day, who's probably been thinking about this cherry Coke since he woke up first thing in the morning, gets denied and then brushes it off and says, well, you can't always get what you want. I really, really wonder what went through Mick's mind. But I can almost imagine what it would be like someone saying today, like, suck it up, sunshine, which is a saying we have here around the house when things don't turn out and a pity party ensues. But depression is sneaky like that. It can come in so many different shapes and sizes. I'm not saying Mick was depressed, but if I had my guesses, and having been in his shoes of playing to some empty rooms myself, I would venture to say catching an unsuspecting dose of reality will leave any of us in an emotional funk, no matter the stage we entertain. In an overly simplified definition, that's what depression is. What you hoped for didn't happen. Again, I realize I'm oversimplifying it, and like I said, it comes in all sizes. But when we step back and we look at the circumstance, whether it's losing a loved one, or failing a test, or tanking a project at work, in the end, depression is a reaction of an unwanted outcome. But... 
as Mr. Jagger went on to say, if you try some time, yeah, you just might find you get what you need. So, let's find what we need. Let's take a few steps back and demystify depression. Join me for part one of this three-part series as we come to understand we can't always get what we want. And while that can be the case, sometimes we come to find just what we need. I'm Chan Lawson, and let's come it down in three, two, one. Sometimes things just don't go our way. You wanted door number three, but uh, we're given door number two. Simply put, you're against what just happened, which sends you into a downward spiral of mulling over the outcome, over and over, sinking further into an ocean and being carried off by a current you can't control. That's depression. I'm sure I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, but seeing it visually helps our understanding of where we are and what steps we need to take in swimming to safer waters. So today I'm going to share one anchor. Again, this is part one of three. One anchor that will hold us in place until the emotional storm has passed. Because as with every storm, guess what? It will eventually pass. As hard as it is, wait out the storm. Change the channel. Have you ever started watching a really, really bad movie and said to yourself, why am I watching this? The new Wonder Woman 1984 comes to mind, but instead of turning it, you just keep watching, hoping desperately for it to get better. And as with WW 1984, it never did. Our thought patterns are the same. The fancy term is called ruminating, but it basically means when you think and think some more, and then rethink and think even more of the same dark, sad thought. It's ruminating. Rehashing the same thought over and over displaces any hope of moving forward in a positive step. But there is a way out of this. And you're going to be insanely surprised how simple it is. All by changing one single word, which will have a most promising effect. Erase the word why from your vocabulary. Why? Why did I do that? Why did that happen? Why do I have to think this way? Why? and replace that word why with how. How do I do this better next time? How do I make sure that doesn't happen again? How can I look at my circumstance in a different way? The power of a single word is like changing the channel of a bad movie into something different, or even better yet, turn it off. Changing this scenario literally by going outside, even for 15 minutes, as you purposefully reframe the whys into hows. Depression is such a vast, encompassing topic that I would be kidding myself that a 15-minute podcast episode would solve any and all problems. So, as I mentioned, this is the first in a series that we will take over the next few weeks to break down the habits and the behaviors of this dark cloud we call depression. And while I've stated many times before, I don't profess to have every answer, but together and along with trained professionals, 
we can find our way out of the currents of chaos into calmer waters. I'm just grateful to have you along as we swim these oceans together. Before I end this episode, I want to say thank you. Listenership has been unbelievable. Thank you. I could not be more grateful than to have you walking these steps by my side as we learn how to work through our ups and our downs and our laughs and our cries. So thank you. I do not take this for granted at the least. And after much thought, I've decided to keep Calm It Down podcast commercial free as long as possible. So no commercials, no interruptions, no, hey, buy this now, check out this link, click on this and that. However, if you would like to help support what I'm doing with the podcast, I've added a donation button at the top right-hand corner of CometDownPodcast.com. That's CometDownPodcast.com. If you're wanting to support to help cover the cost of hosting and other ancillaries that go along with us, I would be humbly grateful. I've had some people give $1. I've had some people give $1,000. Okay, that's not true. But whatever you're comfortable with, if you would like to support, I would be sincerely grateful. Otherwise, a review on Apple Podcasts would bring a smile to my face just as much. Again, thank you for listening. To find more episodes of Calm It Down, hear the musical playlist from today's episode, or simply wanting to know where to send chocolate chip cookies, visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. You'll even find additional resources for emotional support, including our online community and our Facebook page. You're not alone. You are not alone. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer, pianist, and nationally recognized, Sweet Tooth. And now something my attorney wants me to say. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and is not intended to, nor should they serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you, and you should only act upon the advice of such physician. Now, what I'd like to say. I am an extreme empath by nature. But my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or physician. I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this and future podcasts in aiding those needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit CometDownPodcast.com. And finally, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of emotional health. I'm Chad Lawson, and until next time, be kind to your mind, and join me next week as we 